Hi, this is Alex from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another record to play for you. Today's record is The Prince and the Proper for 1978. So let's get started. This tale took place long years ago in England across the seas. Two boys who looked like twins were friends and switched identities. Imagine the confusion and the fun that happened then. Till Prince and Pauper were reversed and wrong set right again. Many years ago in England, in the great city of London, a boy named Tom Canty was born. But there was little happiness for the family was very poor. Yeah, just another mouth to feed. I can hardly afford to keep a roof over my family's head now. And on that very same day, another boy was born. This time, there was great happiness, for he was born to the great King Henry VIII. He was called Edward Tudor, and he was the new Prince of Wales. He shall be taught by the finest tutors, and they will make him ready to become king. As the years passed, the life of the two boys differed greatly. The young prince was given the best that money could buy. You are a prince, and you are to learn all about the world. The world is such a great place. It is filled with many different people. And when you are the king, you will rule over many of these people that you are studying about. I will be a good king. We know that you will, your highness. The other boy was having quite a different upbringing. For Tom Canty had been taught to beg. Yeah, let me see how much you got from the people today. Here it is, father. What? <laughs> Only a few coppers, how come? I tried, Paula, I did. But no one wanted to give me any money. You're a lazy, good-for-nothing boy. If you come home with so little ever again, I'll take this whip to you. Do you understand? I do. With those words, Tom ran out of the house. Now, Tom had a tutor also. He was also his friend. He was a priest, and he was called Father Andrew. Tom, what is wrong, boy? It's me father. He was very angry with me today. Oh, what was wrong today? I didn't beg enough coins. He told me that if I did not do better, he would whip me. My boy, one day you will be old enough to find your own way, and all this will be behind you. But when? In just a few more years. I wish that I was the king of the land. Then it would be different. Uh, the king? <laughs> My boy, that would be impossible. But just think. If you were a prince, you would have only the best. You would have servants, lots of good food, and handsome clothes. Oh, would I have a horse, Father Andrew? Would oh, I have a horse? Oh, you would have hundreds of horses. Oh, I wish I was a prince. Then I... No, I'd better get home. See you later. Well, study your Latin hard for our next meeting. Yes, Father. Tom bid his friend goodbye and started to walk home. It would be wonderful if I were a king. I would have a sword and... Oh, hello, Jerome. Well, where are you going? Oh, oh, do you want to play? And play what? I am the king and you are my lord. Kneel before me. I take my sword and make you my first minister. Oh, thank you, my prince. <laughs> I'd better get home now. My father would be upset if I'm late. Uh, see you, Tom. On his way home, Tom began thinking. If I was the prince, I would be happy all the rest of me days. Walking on his way, Tom took the wrong turn. And soon he was standing right in front of... A palace! Oh, well, I took the wrong lane, and, and it led me to a palace. Oh, I wish I could live in there. It was a beautiful palace. The towers reached to the sky. Little did Tom know that this was the palace of Westminster, where the king lived. I think I'll go over to the gate and take a look inside. Tom walked closer and looked through the gates. Oh, I see a boy over there. He must be a prince. He must be a real prince. Then Tom felt a hand on his shoulder. Here, yeah, what are you doing? Just looking at the palace. You have no right here. Move on. But I'm not bothering anyone. Do as I tell you. Oh. The sound of the guard's voice made the prince come to the gate and say to him, Guard, what are you doing? This beggar boy was looking through the gates of the palace. That is no way to treat one of my father's subjects. 
Let him go. But, but your Let highness... Let him go or I will tell my father. Oh, whatever you say, your highness. Now open the gate. Uh, open the gate? But, but why? I do not have to give you a reason. Open the gate. The guard did as he was told. The great iron gate swung open. My friend, are you all right? I am. Well, don't stand out there. Come in. Are you sure that you want me to come into your garden? Of course. You look frightened, but why? Well, I'm just a beggar, and I'm just a little frightened of being invited into the palace gardens. Would you like to see the inside of the palace? Would you really take me all over? I will give you the grand tour. Let us pretend that you are a famous visitor from a foreign land, and that I am the king. Very well. Now I will take you into the throne room. The two boys ran all over the palace. Tom could not believe his eyes. The palace was all that he had ever dreamed it would be. Each room was grander than the one before. And this is my room. Yeah, your own room. I'll open the door so that you can look at it. The door swung open, and Tom saw a beautifully furnished room. It must be wonderful living in a palace. Not really. I sit over here by the window and look out over the city and wish that I was able to run through the streets. Really? I run through the streets all the time. What is it like to live out there in the city? Oh, well, it's nothing like here. We don't live in a beautiful palace. We live in an old house and I play in the street. When I want to swim, I jump into the river. I wish I could do that. I wish I could wear clothes like yours. But my clothes are nothing but rags. I wish I could wear rich clothes like yours. I have an idea. Why don't we exchange clothes? Then you could wear my robes and I could wear your rags. It looks like we are the same size. So the boys changed. And to their amusement... Look! Your clothes fit me. We are exactly the same size. Come over here and look into my mirror. Oh, I can't believe it. Are my eyes playing tricks on me? Why, why, we could pass for twins. You really do look like me. And I look like you, your highness. We could be doubles. Why, look at the bruise on your arm. Does it hurt very much? Oh, it's not too bad. I'm going to the guard and see to it that he is punished. I'll go with you. No, you stay here in my room till I get back. Just before the prince left the room, he picked up an object of gold and put it into a little compartment in the arm piece of a suit of armor. The prince then walked to the gate. The prince, who was dressed as the beggar, called to the guard. Guard, open the gate. Yes, so, it's the beggar boy. The guard grabbed the prince and pulled him oh. out into the street and then hit him. Dare you take that. That is for making the prince angry with me. And the guard hit him again. How dare you hit me? I am the prince. I'll have you punished for hitting me. <laughs> Are you the prince? <laughs> get off with you. If you don't get moving, I'll put my hand to you again. The prince could not believe what had happened. As he stood there, a man grabbed him. Eh, how did you do today, Tom? What do you mean? Who are you? Don't you know your own father? Remember what I said? You'd better get more money or else don't bother coming home tonight. The prince ran away from the man and soon he was at the center of the city. Oh, I don't know where I am or where I'm going. I know that building. It's the old church that my father is going to have rebuilt into a home for the poor children. I'll go there and they will treat me well. The prince walked over to the building and opened the door. The building was filled with children. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. <laughs> Greetings. Oh, my, my, my. Who do we have here? Will you tell the headmaster that Edward, the Prince of Wales, is here? Did you hear that? Uh, this beggar thinks that he's the prince. I think he's a loony. <laughs> yeah. Let's pretend to believe him. All hail the prince. Yes, oh, hail the prince. Come on, lads. We have to bow to him. We bow on our knees to Prince of Wales. You are all making fun of me. The prince hit one of the boys who was laughing at him. <laughs> hit me, will you? Then a fight broke out. All the boys were against the prince. Soon they had grabbed hold of him. Let me go. We'll let you go. Let's take him to the river and throw him in. Yeah. We'll do that. We will do with you what we want to. Come on, pick him up. Yeah. The boys ran to the river with the prince. Now, your princeship. I'll throw you into the river. 
I hope you know how to swim. And into the river went the prince. The boys stood on the banks of the water and laughed and laughed. Have a good swim, your majesty. Then the boys ran away. Dead. 
We must go to the palace. Your father is here and he is alive. Let me go. Oh, try to fight me, will you? I'll beat you for this. A gentleman was passing in the street and saw the older man hitting the boy. Stop hitting that boy. Hey, he's my son. I'll do with him what I want. There's no reason to be so brutal with I him. shall do what I want. He is not my father. I'm the prince of the land and soon to be the new king. He's mad. Don't believe him. He will only beat me if he takes me with him. I believe you. You are staying with me. Yeah, we'll see about that. If you touch this boy, you will have to fight me, Miles Hendon. And look, uh, old man, my sword is very sharp. Oh, 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 I'm not very good with a sword. Then the boy will stay with me. Thank you. I have been very badly treated and made to beg and even to wrong. And that is all behind you, my boy. Now, come, you look tired. Oh, I have not slept in a bed in four nights. And then we shall find an inn, and you shall have a good night's sleep and some good hot food. The prince was very happy that he had found such a kind man to help him. After the boy fell asleep, the kind gentleman thought to himself, This boy needs care. I shall let him rest tonight, and then tomorrow I shall take him to the hospital where they will be able to help him. All this time, the beggar boy Tom was having a wonderful time in the palace, giving orders to all the people. Meanwhile, at the inn, Tom's father stole in and kidnapped the prince. In the morning, Miles looked for him in his room, but could not find him anywhere. That man must have stolen him away. I'll find him. In an old barn, the man who had stolen the prince laughed as he threw him down onto a bed of straw. Now is the man who protected you. He's nowhere in sight. Stay away from me. Uh, I want you to beg me not to hit you, boy. Do you understand? Please, don't <laughs> hurt me. Please. Yeah, now that's better. This time you'll not be whipped. You gotta stay over there and don't you dare leave. Or I'll take this whip to you and beat you. Well, I will do as you say. Yeah. The boy was too tired and frightened to do anything but fall asleep. Hours passed. The boy was awakened by the sound of men talking in loud voices. It was a meeting of all the thieves of London. Now, when the man who was Tom's father saw that the boy was awake, he called out... Hey, look, 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 here's my loony son. Oh, he, he, he says he's the king. <laughs> Come over here, boy. What are you going to do? Uh, sit on this barrel. This is your throne. Hail to the king. Here's my old hat. This will be your crown. Now, look at the little king of England. Now, get back to your bed of straw. In the morning, the boy was awakened by a ragamuffin. Wake up and come with me. What do you want me for? We're going to get some money. How? Come on with me. The prince followed the younger boy into the streets of London. Now, you see that man coming this way? I'll pretend to be sexy and start to cry and tell that man that we're poor and haven't had anything to eat for days. I understand. The little boy fell to the ground as the old man came by. Oh, what is wrong? Oh, I'm, I'm sick. Oh, oh. Do not believe him. He is a beggar just trying to get money from you. Oh, wait till I tell your father. He is not my father. The prince turned and ran into the crowded streets of old London. The prince wandered and wandered, for London was a big city, and it was easy to become lost there. Soon he came to an old house. I'll see if I can rest here. Hello? Anyone here? Uh, welcome and enter. Oh, who are you? I am the King of England. Oh, many have come here to rest, but a king in rags is indeed most welcome. Thank you for being so kind. Oh, I will tell you who I truly am if you can keep a secret. I am not a simple hermit as I appear. I am an archangel. But I am the king. Let me tell you what happened. The prince told the old man all that had happened to him. <laughs> So the old king is gone, and you are the new one. Well, I hated your father. It was he who drove me out of my house and home and forced me to live a solitary life in this hut for the rest of my life. Now I'll never let you go. The prince tried to run, but the old hermit was as fast as lightning, and he blocked the door. Uh, you're not going to get away from me. The prince saw a window at the end of the room and ran for it and jumped out. He ran till he could not see the hut of the strange old man morning came, there was great excitement in the city, for well, this was the day of the coronation of the new king. Tom the beggar boy was pleased. All his dreams were coming true. I'll be the king, well, at least until I can find the real one. The streets were filled with people cheering him as his carriage made its way to the abbey where the coronation was to take place. Tom looked over the throng of the people and suddenly he heard a familiar voice. Oh, Tom! Look, there in that carriage, it's my son. 
run. Tom looked at the crowd and saw his mother. Stay away from the king. That is my son. Now that is the king of England. Stop. That lady is my mother. Yeah. The king's madness returns. Then over the crowd's noise came a voice of the real prince. Wait. I am the king. Get back there, big ass. No, stop. He is the true king. The boys then told Lord Hertford what had happened. If you are truly the king, where is the great seal of England? In my room at the palace, there is a secret compartment in my private cabinet. Press the head of the dragon and it will open. There you will find the seal of the land. Lord Hertford went back to the palace and to the prince's room. He pressed the dragon's head and the secret door opened. But there was no seal. He went back to the boys and said, The seal is not there. Are you sure you searched carefully? How could a big round golden disc like that vanish? Sire, don't you remember? Before you left the room, you put it somewhere else. I have been using this thing as a nutcracker. Oh, yes. Now I remember. Hertford, look in the armpiece of the Milanese armor in my room. It is hidden there. And Hertford went back to the palace and found the great seal exactly where the true prince had said it would be. After the coronation, the two boys talked together. It was fun being a king for a little while. I, too, had a great adventure. I have found that my people have been unjustly treated. It will all change now that I am the king. You shall become a king's ward, and your mother and sisters will come to live with you here in the palace. You and I shall remain friends for the rest of time. And they were. Miles Hendon was knighted by King Edward for helping him in the streets of London. Many of the laws that made the people hate the king were changed. And Edward's reign as king was one of the most just in the history of England. So that was The Prince and the Proper from 1978. So please like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. And our next record will be... The Dancing Princess.